little early, but still, Samsung has managed to give us a brand new Ultra to start the year. Now, as always, I've abstained from watching any other impression videos that have already been published so as to not have them influence my thoughts on the device. You also know that I like to give a device a couple of days use before dropping my impressions video so as to let the hype cool down and to spend enough time with the said device. That said, welcome to the first video in 2021. Here are my first impressions and thoughts on the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra. Right, so I got out of the briefing for this phone, moved my data to it, and the first thing that hit me was how big the device is. Quite thick, with a couple of C's, and hefty too. Anyway, that's not to say that this is quite a bulky phone. In fact, for what it's worth, it's quite usable. Feels comfortable in the hand due to those curved corners, and the screen is significantly flat, which I'm a fan of. You can pick the Galaxy S21 Ultra in a suite of new colors, including Phantom Black, Phantom Silver, Phantom Titanium, Phantom Navy, and Phantom Brown. I've got the Phantom Silver here, and I'm digging it. Quite a fan of that matte finish bark. Design-wise, the Galaxy S21 Ultra is nothing we've not expected for a while now, with a major major change being the new colors and that camera design which you just can't ignore. It's an improvement from the bland, ugly looking S20 Ultra camera bump and it's definitely taking notes from the Note 20 Ultra's camera bump and taking things a tad bit bigger. It's taller, pronounced and more tapered than that on the Note. True story, fun fact, since this is a big phone to hold and use, I found myself supporting the phone with my index finger from that camera bump. I'm just throwing it out there. Anyway, it serves a purpose as you're going to see in a few moments. Other than that, the design remains familiar with all the buttons, ports and grills where you'd more or less expect them to be. Up next is the screen. I laid this with the usual motto. Samsung produced the best smartphone displays out there. And that's just giving the devil his dues. You've got a 6.8 inch dynamic AMOLED display up front that's brighter than that on S20 Ultra. Furthermore, you can now lock 120Hz refresh rate at Quad HD Plus resolution. Speaking of which, Samsung have really split the atom with this panel and are now making it vary refresh rate between 10Hz where whatever's on the screen doesn't need the full 120Hz capability of the phone and that saves a bit of battery. How much battery is a bit? Well, I can't put a number on it, so you'll have to wait till the full review for that. And the Galaxy S21 Ultra also has that Gorilla Glass Victus front and back for added toughness and protection. One thing I happen to notice though is, in real life, the Note 20 Ultra has a brighter display than that on the S21 Ultra. And there's this disparity in screen technology that disturbs how you perceive color temperature on the display. Standing alone, the S21 Ultra has a gorgeous panel to look at and I promise you it'll be the best multimedia consumption screen in your whole apartment building. But put it side by side with the Note 20 Ultra and the S20 Ultra and you can't miss that color temperature disparity. And that's with all the settings and screen configurations set equally. T for tough, but nothing major. Nothing the average user will recognize unless he or she had all three phones side by side. The Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra also sees an improvement in the in-display ultrasonic fingerprint scanner in that it's 1.7 times larger but still performs the same. Nothing to write home about. It's fast, accurate and secure. Also, I'm really digging these new wallpapers for this phone. Samsung never misses a beat with wallpapers. This year, the Galaxy S21 Ultra sees the addition of pen input with the S Pen. And yes, you can report the S Pen from your Galaxy Note 9, Note 10, and Note 20, and it'll work just fine on the S21 Ultra. Don't fancy that? Well, you can go out and purchase the S Pen for $49 and a carrying case for the said S Pen for another $20. I've got my reservations about that whole setup. I feel like it's taking away from the aesthetic of the phone, adding bulk to the phone for something you might not use. It's like they didn't really think it through and sort of left it to the intern to design the case for the S Pen. Make matters worse, you don't get the full features of the S Pen, like gestures and camera functionality supported on here. All the same, it's there if you want it. The S21 Ultra supports the S Pen now. Let's talk about the internals of this bad boy. So first up, the Galaxy S21 Ultra runs on the latest Snapdragon 888 chipset if you pick this up in the States or in China. If you don't, you'll end up with the new Exynos 2100 chipset 
with Samsung is promising to be 40% faster and more efficient. Again, I can't quite put some truth to that claim up until I have both the Exynos and the Snapdragon variant to run tests side by side. And all said and done, I've not experienced any lags or throttling or battery issues since I picked this one up. Let's wait for the long-term performance before playing judge and jury. You get a gigantic 5,000 mAh battery powering up this phone with no charger to charge the damn thing. Samsung followed Apple's trend of not including a charger in the box on this one a bit too fast. And that's after trolling Apple a couple of times quite literally living long enough to become the villain. I love the planet and all, but I'll never buy that. We are not shipping a charger with your new phone to save the planet story. Heck, I'd rather they did what Xiaomi did. Not include a charger in the box, but include it if you ask for it and at no extra cost. Because let's face it, the charger that comes in the box of your new phone is usually the best charger for that phone. Don't get me wrong, I get it. Not including a charge in the box was also a cost saving measure and allows them to ship more units and those savings have trickled down to us seeing that this phone retails at $1,200 and that's $200 cheaper than what the S20 Ultra launched at. But still, a charger is a basic need. Anyway, we get what we get. The phone ships with Android 11 straight out the box with One UI 3.1 running on top of Android. And let me just say, I'm a big fan of One UI 3.1. Storage-wise, you can pick this phone up with either 128 or 256 or 512 gigs of storage, with the latter being the only one that can spec up to 16 gigs of RAM. The 128 and 256 storage variants ship with a max of 12 GB RAM. Oh, and this phone straight up doesn't ship with an SD card slot for expanding your storage. Fun times these are. Funny how we went from the S20 Ultra supporting up to 1.5 terabytes of internal storage to only 512 gigs of max storage on the S21 Ultra. To put it in context, that's space enough for only 3 hours of 8K video. That's if you got no apps, no music or photos on the phone already. Let's talk about the main attraction on this phone, the cameras. So. The Galaxy S21 Ultra has the same 108 megapixel f1.8 main camera lens from last year's S20 and Note 20 Ultra with the addition of laser autofocus for those quick focus speeds. You get a 10 megapixel periscope telephoto lens with 10x optical zoom, another 10 megapixel telephoto lens with 3x optical zoom, and finally a 12 megapixel ultra wide shooter. Now, it's a quad camera system, but it's sort of five cameras with the reintroduction of dual pixel autofocus. Basically, that means the phone utilizes dual pixel autofocus to bring out some crisp macro shots, even without a dedicated macro mode. Now, I can't dive deep into the details on camera performance, seeing as the phone is not yet released and is running on pre-release software, but for the few shots you see here, there's quite literally no fault in the camera. Color accuracy, saturation, and science are on point, Dynamic range is epic and these photos feel rich and not at all lacking in detail. Video quality is also top notch, especially slapping on that super steady mode to stabilize video taken in motion. Samsung have also revamped the camera interface and have now moved the video quality toggles straight onto the viewfinder, meaning you don't have to dive into the settings to change video quality. Speaking of which, there's this new feature called Director's View. Have a look. So this here is director's view on the new Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra. As you can see, that is my nice mug in the picture in picture. And uh, over here, you can see different variations of the said uh, perspectives, the director's perspectives actually. You can switch to, to X and zoom in all the way or pull back out to ultra wide. We also see the introduction of zoom locking. See how 30x photos and above are quite unusable, especially in handheld, how the slightest shaking of your hands can ruin the shot you're trying to zoom into. The S21 Ultra allows you to lock into that object that you're zooming in on and plays around with the crop to get a stable shot. I never thought I'd say this, but this is the one feature that's made zooming in up to 100x actually a better experience. Don't get me wrong though, the photos are somewhat unusable. In fact, I'd say anything past 10x is plain pushing it, but if it makes the experience better, it deserves a shout out. Again, I can't dive deep into the camera details as of now, but be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications 
so you don't miss that in-depth camera review and comparison between the ultras i'm talking about the note 20 ultra versus the s21 ultra versus s20 ultra all right let's sum this up the s21 ultra what are my overall thoughts about it well here's the thing let's just get this out of the way the galaxy s21 and the galaxy s21 plus are in one word fine they're okay that doesn't make them bad phones not in any shape form or factor but they're nothing to write home about nothing exciting nothing different i'd go as far as say they're just a new look and a new chip and uh that's about it the samsung galaxy s21 ultra is different samsung last year messed up with the s20 ultra it wasn't quite deserving of the name ultra yes it did attack the numbers and go overkill but it felt rushed like samsung was just cramming numbers in there and didn't deliver in the real world the result of that was a seriously gimped phone in areas it shouldn't have been lacking then came the note 20 ultra which took the s20 ultra's fails and refined and consolidated them into what made the note 20 ultra so good with this samsung have gone and redeemed themselves this here is the resurgence yes they've cut back on some vital filling areas like the removal of the sd card slot and the charger from the box but in every way you can think of the s21 ultra getting cut down samsung have an answer for it they've either found a way to justify or cover up for it and the result of that is i think one phone so deserving of the ultra name it's basically pushing the limits even further well that's it for today's video again this was just my first impressions and thoughts on the samsung galaxy s21 ultra if you've got any questions about this phone or want to see me cover a specific aspect of the phone feel free to reach out in the comment section below and i'll make those videos or at least include what you want to see in the full review thanks a bunch for watching come hang out with me on twitter and instagram catch you in the next one that's gonna be really soon peace